Hey, welcome to the channel. Thanks for checking out the video. Today I want to talk about differences in crankshafts. Um, you know, what's the old version uh, and the, you know, the more modern cranks. And the, the easiest way to tell is the this hole right here. This hole that runs through the crank, uh, the crank journal right here. And, and from my understanding, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but you know, what I had heard or read, my understanding was that this was done to, um, you know, to alleviate weight on this side of uh, your rotating mass, right? You have your counterweights here, and then the piston on an 820 is so heavy um, that it was, it was unbalanced, right? So to improve balance, they lightened the crank on the top side, we'll call this the top, right? On the piston, the top side, they lightened it by drilling that hole through there to help improve weight. So the easiest way to tell if you have either a West Bend or a, a Chrysler, a Chrysler crankshaft is, you know, do you have this hole right here? And it, it's really important, you know, to, to take your uh, micrometer um, and, and check these, especially on these old ones, just to make sure it's not worn out. So this one is used, but it's still in perfect condition. The, you know, keyway is perfect. Keys are perfect. All the threads are perfect. So um, it's probably a Chrysler, you know, not a West Bend. Doesn't have that as many decades or hour of, of runtime. But this is your vintage crankshaft, right? And this is, this is modern. Okay, so this is a U.S. motor power one. You can tell by a couple of things. The, the Woodruff key, the, the keyway is cut directly on the, the top of the, the crankshaft. Um, and all of the U.S. motor power ones that I've seen have had the, the keyway cut right there on top for the PTO side, right? Your your flywheel side, these are all in the same spot on all of them because that's how your engine um, is timed right there. Okay, so uh, this is a U.S. motor power one, right? Still in perfect shape. Another thing you can tell is this little, this little I think, uh, I'm not a machinist, but a uh, chamfer, I believe, is, you know, how you would describe that at the back of the threads you know you can see the this uh, West Bend or Chrysler one you know it actually you know doesn't chamfer I guess chamfer is the right term you know but it's not recessed at the back of the threads like this US motor power one so US motor power and then these are the two you know modern ones this is your standard right so all of these are your standard stroke uh, 1.625 you know length strokes and then this is your your stroker crank right here 1.777 inch stroke so this is the this is what we put in the 894 to make the the stroker engines right and the 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 key thing about that length right that 1.77 because there there are there are longer ones out there Right, there's a uh, horseman, horseman back in the uh, 60s or 70s that had up to a, um, a two inch stroke. And I believe US Motor Power even made some as well. Or K Precision made them for them. Um, but you know, these are your vintage ones. This is your modern one, right? You can tell your more modern crankshafts all have that hole right there. Yeah, I know the. The cart guys, they're not huge fans of this three quarters inch PTO, um, but you know, unfortunately, the vast majority of all uh, uh, of all clutches out there in the world are, are three quarters inch. All all engines make a three quarter inch PTO, U.S. or foreign. You know, your Predators, your Hondas, your Kawasaki, whatever. Everything has a, a three quarter inch PTO. So. Um, I, I know you don't like it for gearing, but that's the, you know, the, the world has, has changed from the, from the step cranks and it pretty much Jim Donovan at max torque. Um, and I'll put a link down there. If you have one of, one of these, I'll put a link in the description to max torque, but, um, you know, you call Jim, if you don't already have some, you call Jim Donovan at max torque. Usually his daughter answers the phone and, and she'll help you. Um, and he'll help you build a, a clutch for these you know he's got a standard one that 
I use for all my mini bikes. And then he also has a, a racing one. So anyways, these are your two. Again, I know you don't like it, but three quarters inch, you know, it's kind of the, the way things are for now anyways. Uh, but you know, why 1.77, seven, you know, why did they, why did they settle on that? Okay. So on your longer, your longer strokes, like your two inch ones, right? As your crankshaft comes around, your connecting rod and the rod cap is going to hit right here. So no matter what, any, any stroker you have, you know, um, if you find a horseman like 1.75 or, or this, you know, this modern power B 1.77, um, no matter what, it's going to, it's going to hit right here. All right. So what I do is that I have a, uh, just a round file and, and basically just, you know, recess this area right here, just run it through there. Right there. So you got to recess those two areas. And then depending on your stuffer, whether you have a, a stuffer um, or the, you know, the bottom feeder intake, the, the stuffer intake uh, will determine if you have to relieve the stuffer or not. So if you have the, the actual stuffer that, you know, that fits down into the bottom and stuffs it up, um, then what I do is I just take a, an angle grinder, all right, make sure the, the stuffer is sitting here, take an angle grinder, and all you got to do is put that grinder right inside the, the center of it. And the, the new stuffers are thick enough that you can, you know, you can cut real deep into it. It's not like the, the vintage ones. The new ones are thick. So you can cut deep enough to, to relieve some material for your, uh, for your rod cap. Because as it comes around, right, your, your rod and your rod cap is no longer down here in the center. It's up higher like this, right? So it's going to hit. And then hitting it right here. So those are easily modified. And then if you have a bottom feeder, you don't need to modify it at all. But the next important part is as it's coming around, right? Your rod cap, you've just relieved it here, but 1.77 is just long enough to increase your CCs from 134 to 136 but not long enough to require you to machine the bottom of your cylinder, right? So it's just a, a, a the, the best of both worlds, right? You get a little more power for minimal um, maintenance or minimal modifications on your cylinder block. You don't actually have to, to change the, the, the bottom of the cylinder wall. And then the next thing is you don't have to change the piston, right? So let's say you're, Pretend your piston's going up and down, right, on your stroke or crank. If it's too tall and your piston comes up too high, whenever it goes back down, it's going to go down too low and it's going to hit right in here with my, with my fat finger, right? You're going to hit right here. So then you have to start relieving the bottom edge of the piston and it's just, you know, more work. So with this one, this 1.77, you know, all you have is a little material right here and right here you have to take out maybe you have to modify the stuff or maybe you don't it just depends on what type of you know intake or stuffer you use so two little small spots to modify and then you don't have to modify your piston and you don't have to modify like the actual bottom edge of the actual cylinder itself okay so you know that was the the r d the science whatever you want to call it the the reason for the design of uh of 1.77 um, any longer and then uh, you'd still have to do piston mods and things like that so uh, so that's it for today I just want to show you the the crankshafts the you know the the newest ones and kind of explain the the reason for that very specific stroke length you know I think the font looks cool on the decals 894 9 900 would have looked cooler but uh, that would just require you know more modifications to the uh, to the skirt of the piston and to the to the bottom of the cylinder.